them is just like they're having fun. Oh, nice, nice. Now I want a selfie picture with you. I took a picture of you yesterday, but now with your outfit <laughs> and what you're doing. Uh, hold on. Okay. Come on. Oh, ready? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
pacing element is relative. Good morning and welcome to day two of the City Fair Swimming World Series. I would like to welcome the officials to the day. Beginning with the 15 minute butterfly. I do want to remind the 400 swimmers that you need to repeat to the or report to the on-call room 15 minutes before you are posted to time. For the 400 freestyle swimmers.
Strobe, Fibonacci on a day, once you get that strobe in lane 8, it's a red day. Just watching some highlights from yesterday's competition. Welcome back for those of you that are coming up bright and early around the world for, to the City Paris Swimming World Series in Indianapolis, Indiana. Brought to you by the great folks at Toyota here in the US and ultimately City. I want to thank City for their sponsorship of this event series that's going throughout the world. I believe the next stop is in Madeira. It's a beautiful location and another outstanding set of athletes are set to go there. But for now, here we are in beautiful Indianapolis, Indiana. <clears throat> it's in its pre-stages of being beautiful and in the spring we call that rain. So it's a little rainy, a little chilly. Our competition today starts with the 50, 50 meter butterfly and we'll go with the, the women generally go first and then the men's heats after that. We have three heats of the women. This is the women's 50 meter long course butterfly for S1 to S7 classifications. Yesterday we had uh, great competition. Today we have in the men's side, we have somebody going for a world record so I'll I'll alert you to that and we'll keep a close eye on that athlete. In this first heat in lane one from Mexico, Nicole Tovar Berlovsky. In lane two from the United States, Maggie Scherter. In lane three from Mexico, Carla Bravo Gonzalez. In lane four from the United States, Anna Aspen. In lane five, Naomi Somayera Mandujano from Mexico. In lane six, from Costa Rica, that is Ariana Cotto. Dunia Felices from Peru in lane number seven, and in lane eight from Canada, we have Miriam Solomon. This is the women's 50 meter butterfly, multi-class. And the class classifications in this race throughout these three heats are S1 through S7. There's definitely a, a different kind of demeanor on the deck this morning. I think uh, the athletes are truly settled in and here to race. They were yesterday and some great races happened. But we'll see what, see what they bring on day two. Fatigue starts to set in when you're swimming multiple events. That looks like uh, lane four is out to lead. That's Hannah Aspen from the United States. Hannah is a world-class athlete, multiple Paralympic Games, gold medals, world records in the backstroke. And she is showing that this morning. Outstanding, she's got about five meters left to go. And Hannah Aspen in lane four from the United States hits the wall in 33.96. And that is well under her entry time. Sometimes athletes don't get a chance to swim some off events or they're building up some new events, something that they want to show or 
early in a day if they have another event coming up they want to blast out and get that first first event jitters out of their system second there at 40.63 was mondahano from mexico our second heat is just about to parade out as this first heat gets out of the water have a, a designated finish end of the pool so anything that's a hundred 200 or 400 will be at the end that they're finishing on right now is where they will start for the 50s we go down to the far side of the pool in heat two from the Dominican Republic Lourdes Abardiaz in lane two from the United States Caitlin Trevor in lane three from the United States, Mallory Wegeman. In lane four from Colombia, Sarah Vargas Blanco. Swimming in lane five from Mexico, Naomi Ortiz Mendez. Mia Clark from the United States is in lane six. From Canada, in lane seven, that's Hannah Olette. And in lane eight, Ibeth Solario Cuevas from Mexico. This will be heat two of three of the women's 50 meter butterfly multi-class. And the classes contested here are S1 through 7. Probably the best thing about the, the 50 butterfly is it really is just a dive in and go. There's, there's not a lot of strategy other than being very intentional, intentional of not losing your stroke rhythm, keeping your kick steady just really getting those arms forward. Lane three, out in front early, that's Mallory Wegeman from the United States. Next to her, Sarah Blanco from Columbia is, ch is just beginning to challenge her. Mallory's keeping her stroke nice and long and out in front, and it looks like Sarah is Picking up her tempo. Talked about that a lot in the breaststroke yesterday. Very similar story in the butterfly. If you can pick up your tempo late in the race, it can really help you make a move on either your best time or on the race that you're in. First in that heat, Mallory Wegeman from the United States at 36.83. Second was Sarah, Bar Sarah Vargas Blanco from Colombia, 37.52. And in third on that heat, 39.08, that is Naomi Ortiz Mendez from Mexico. Finishing up in lane seven there was Hannah Ouellette from Canada. And we've got one more swimmer out there in lane eight. Finishing up her 50 butterfly. She's got about seven or eight meters left to go. When they get to that red solid part of the lane line, there's five meters left to the wall. And uh, a lot of times in the butterfly, you're seeing red when you get to those lane lines. She's got about two strokes left here. Hits the wall in her time is not coming up. So I'm sure they'll work that out at the administrative desk. That was he too. There's their times. A couple of times didn't come up. Um, that's, that's very normal uh, when you have electronics around water. Sometimes it don't hit the pad hard enough. Sometimes the pad just doesn't fire, but the people that we have behind the lanes are uh, backup timers and officials, and then we have backups for the backups. So we're always gonna get everybody's time, even if it doesn't come up here. And when we see these results after each event, they are unofficial. All of these times need to be ratified by the meat administration and make sure that they were swum properly. We also don't know if anyone's being disqualified along the way. See Mallory Wegeman there getting ready to get over and warm down. She had a really good swim there in heat two. Heat three coming up in lane one, Amanda Sheward from the United States, from Costa Rica in two, Sarah Miranda Corrales. Mackenzie Cohen in lane three from the United States. Ayano Shizuki from Japan is in 
lane four. Lane five, Julia Gaffney from the U.S. In lane six, Megan Giafreda, also from the United States. And their third teammate in this heat, Gabby Schoferth from the U.S. In lane eight, from Canada, that is Mary Jib. This last heat is off and racing. And it looks like lane five out to a commanding lead. That is, I'm sorry, that's lane four. Ayano from Japan. She had some remarkable swims yesterday and uh, not holding back this morning. Mary Jib down there in lane eight is, is just behind her, about a stroke behind her. But that was Ayano Tsuchi from Japan in a 31-16. Second in a 32-71 was Mary Jibb from Canada out there in lane eight. And then in third in that heat was Julia Gaffney from the United States in the 37-16. Got just a few more swimmers coming into the wall. Finishing up there in lane seven, that's Gabby Schoperth. And she swims a 56-87. A little bit off of her entry time. That concludes the women's 50 meter free uh, butterfly. Next up is the men's heats. There are three heats of the men's 50 meter butterfly. Mixed classification. As our last heat of women make their way to the side of the pool. And here come the guys for heat number one. So in heat one of three in lane two is Martin Riley from Canada. Abbas Karimi from the United States is in lane number three. Jesus Alberto Gutierrez Bermudez from Mexico is in lane four, and his brother, Juan Jose Gutierrez Bermudez, is in lane five. Also from Mexico, Hector Alejandro Pedroza Alvarado is in lane six. This is the first of three heats of the men's 50 meter butterfly. You are watching the City Para Swimming World Series this is the USA stop on the tour. And we are at the Indiana University Natatorium in Indianapolis, Indiana. We go, of the many classifications, you can see Abbas Karimi Basically, he just, he dolphin kicks these races. He was uh, been dealing very incredibly in life without arms. And uh, i tell you, he is armed with a great dolphin kick though. The boss looks like he's gonna finish third in this heat. Right next to, that's Jesus Bermudez from Mexico. Getting into the wall first at 34-2. His brother just behind at 35-30. And then Abbas at 38-17. Martin Riley from Canada is finishing up his 50-meter butterfly this morning. How do you make it to the finals at a meet like this? Well, all of these different classifications get put into an equation. <laughs> and we end up with a point score. Each classification has their own world record in every event, and that world record is worth 1,000 points. And then you subtract points from that for every, I believe it's 10th to 15th of a second away from that time, your point score would get lower and lower as you're further and further away from the world record. Those points are then tallied after the, each event finishes, and regardless of your classification, the eight highest point scores in the event make it into our A final. When it is a Paralympic Games contested event, we also have a youth 18 and under final and then we go on to our B final. So at night, some of the events will have three finals, some will just have the one or two. 
in heat two, we've got Morgan Ray in lane two, Connor Giafreda in three, in four, that's Trevor Bell. Those are all from the United States. Raul Alberto Martinez Valdez is in lane five. Sebastian Massigal in lane six, I have been told is going for a world record. I'm looking for my lists of world records here to see how we do that he is in lane six. Octavio Romero Velasquez is in lane seven, but we wanna watch lane six here pretty close, see if he can get to that world record swim. I'm looking for the times that he may have to go. S4 world record is a 40-48. Sebastian was a 39-51. So we ha potentially have a world record that's gonna have to be ratified. We'll see if that happens. And as soon as I get word that that was an official time, I will let you know. Congratulations, Sebastian Masabi from Canada an outstanding swim. I didn't mean to slight any of the other swimmers, but that's a pretty special race when somebody does that. And uh, our, we just heard our venue announcer announce the world record. It's certainly unofficial until it gets ratified, but congratulations to Sebastian. Our third heat is behind the blocks, getting ready to go. In lane two, we have Alex Cooper from the United States. Charlie Gia Michel from Canada in lane three. Corzo. Nelson Crispin Corzo from Colombia is in lane four. Zach Shaddock is swimming in lane five in this event from the US. Also from the United States is Noah Thomas in lane six. And Carlo Ibarra Juarez in lane seven from Mexico. This is heat three of three of the men's 50 butterfly. This last heat is off and racing. Looks like lane three and four have a good battle. That is Charlie G. Michelle from Canada and the Colombian swimmer Nelson Corzo. Nelson has pulled away. It looks like he's going to take this heat. He's about three or four meters ahead of the rest of the field. He hits the wall at 31.83 for the win on that heat. Second in that heat was Charlie G. Michel from Canada. And third, Zach Shaddock with a time of 35.22. 33.98 was Charlie's time over there in lane three. But congratulations to all of our 50 meter butterflyers. Take another look at their start. See, they got away pretty even, but then he pulled away to really took over the race. One. That's Nelson Corzo from Colombia. The winning time of that heat. Again, 31.83. Sometimes there's a little bit of a transition now. We've finished the 50s of the butterfly, and now we're going to move on to the 100s. In the women's 100-meter butterfly, there are three heats. In our first heat from the U.S. is Savannah Zerbel in lane one. Liberty Freeman is swimming in lane two. Rachel Keane from the United States in lane three. Gia Pergolini in lane four. And then from Canada in lane five, Justine Morier. From Colombia, Laura Gonzalez Rodriguez in lane six. Elise Morley is swimming in lane seven for the US. And Natalie Sims is in lane number eight. Swimmers are really having a great first event here at the City Paris Swimming World Series in Indianapolis, Indiana. 
It is a chilly, rainy spring morning here in Indy. But nothing stops us from swimming fast inside. The weather is always 80 and clear. You may be noticing I'm filling time. <laughs> when they move the start from one end to the other end of the pool, they have to test all the equipment, make sure it's all good. The ladies just got the, the long whistle and they are about to start their 100 meter butterfly. This is heat one of three, women's long course meter 100 butterfly S8 to S14. In lane four, out to an early lead that is Gia Pergolini. See what she is at the at the 50 at the halfway mark. She may be just at or under 30 seconds. She's at 30.7, handily taking this heat so far. Chasing a bit behind, but in a close race. On either side of her is Rachel Keene and Justine Morier. Justine is from Canada in lane five. But this race belongs to Gia Pergolini from the United States. She's got a great, great head position, good landing zone. She doesn't lift her head too high for the breath. Keeps, keeps her chin right there at that surface where you see that gush of water coming up. Great swim for Gia. Let's see if her time holds up pretty well. She's a 109.01. She was entered at a 107.7. So she's a little off her morning time, but uh, if she, she's racing for points, not necessarily just to go a, a, a best time. She may have done all the math and sees what she has to do to make that A final in the evening. Very likely she would be in that A final. Second in that heat. All the way over in lane number eight was Natalie Sims at a 114.4. And then third at 116 flat was Justine Morier from Canada. That is Savannah Zerbel just finishing up her 100 meter butterfly in heat one at a 148.84. You hear that whistle in the background. See, Gia just gets away really well. She's, a, she's, a out, she's an outstanding butterfly swimmer. Technically very, very good. And when you're technically good and you put a lot of pressure on those paddles, those hands or whatever that you bring to pull yourself through the water, the more balanced and the better your technique, the faster you go. It's very simple to talk about, not easy to do. We take a look at our beautiful natatorium as we bring in heat number two of three. In lane one from Mexico, Diana Claudio Torres. In lane two from the United States, that is Abby Kershaw. In lane three from Mexico, America Makeda Andrade. Had a great day yesterday. Olivia Chambers, who is 21 and one days old from the United States in lane four. Taylor Winnett in lane five from the United States. Chloe Cedarholm from the United States in lane number six. And in lane seven from Mexico, Maria Teles Gomez. Ali Deal from Canada rounds out this heat in lane eight. Keep an eye on, not just for the future, but for now, Chloe Cedarholm in lane six. She's just 13 years old. The women step up for this heat two of three, the 100 meter butterfly. You're watching the City Para Swimming World Series coming to you from Indianapolis, Indiana. He too is off the blocks and in the water. Good solid start for everybody. Getting away from the box, very clean, good dolphin kicks underwater. They're about 25 meters in to this 100 meter butterfly. Lanes four and five are having a good, good race. That's Olivia Chambers and Taylor Winnett, both from the United States. See who hits that wall first. 
It's going to be Olivia Chambers, 31-64, 31-95 for Taylor Winnett. And then in third, up in lane three, is America Makeda Andrade from Mexico. These two are battling it out. It looks, looks like Olivia Chambers is edging Taylor at this point. About 15 meters to go. They throw those arms forward, and then when they land, they're actually pushing their shoulders forward as well and get a little bit more length out of each stroke. But that was all Olivia Chambers once she got into that second 50. She's in at a 107.58. Just behind her, Taylor Winnett at 109.01. And third, America Makeda Andrade from Mexico at a 116.38. Just have lane eight and lane Lane one just finished. Lane eight, that is Allie Deal from Canada. She gets into the wall there at a 137.43. She entered at a no time, so we're not sure if that's the best time for her. And we move on. You can see uh, what you're seeing there is their second 50 split. And now we've got that, the whole thing. Olivia really dominated out of the start. I don't know that it's been ratified, but I just got word that Sebastian's 50 butterfly was a world record. So congratulations to Sebastian, his coaches, his family, everybody who's involved. Nobody really does this alone. Speaking of not doing it alone, these two needed each other to race, and it looks like Olivia took advantage in that second 50 of her speed and got into the wall first. Our next race coming up is the women's heat three. That's Lizzie Smith, an incredible butterflyer for the United States, a Paralympian in multiple events. Next to her there is Grace Neufer from the United States. In lane one in this heat, Rebecca Eloise Lugo Lugo from Mexico, Momo Sutton from the, from the US in lane two, Piper Sadowski also from the United States in lane three. Grace Neufer, then Lizzie Smith in five, Jessica Long in lane number six, in lane seven, Haven Shepard, and in lane eight from Mexico, that is Diana Laura Jimenez Martinez. Lane four, Grace Neufer out well ahead right from the start, right from the dive. Keeping her stroke rhythm together all the way down that first 50. Grace from the US, it looks like she's gonna be in the wall at a 31.05. Just behind her, Lizzie Smith at a 33.54. Just enjoying watching the butterfly. It, it, from the surface, it looks like everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody has a little bit of different pull, a little bit of a different kick. Certainly everybody has different timing, head position, and who's putting it all together the best right now. That's Grace Neufer in lane number four. Grace is getting into the wall first. 34-9 on that second 50, outstanding. She's 106.02. Second just behind her is Lizzie Smith at a 111.82, and then Jessica Long rounds out the top three of that heat at a 115.31. Got about three swimmers left to go here. See lane seven hitting the wall, that's Haven Shepard. And her time unofficially is 133.68. Rebecca from Mexico finished up there in lane one at 131 and then at 139. Diana Laura Jimenez Martinez from Mexico. You can see their second split there. And their their final times are in the in the low to mid one minute range across the heat. See that start right from the start. Grace just took off in front of the heat. Lizzie's right there with her, really throughout the first 50. 
but Grace gets that dolphin kick going. Lizzie right behind her. The difference between the two of their dolphin kicks, one of them stayed a little bit on the side and one stayed a little bit uh, flat to the surface. And kicking on your side, underwater dolphin kick, for most swimmers is actually faster than swimming at the surface. So Grace took advantage of that. We move on to the men's 100 meter butterfly, S8 to 14. This is heat one of five from Mexico in lane three, Carlos Roca Hernandez. In lane four, Jonathan Hernandez Gonzalez. And in lane five, Diego Magana Vasquez. All three swimmers are from Mexico. Mexico always sends a great contingent to the meets that we host here in the U.S. Very appreciative of them bringing their competition. The, the faster and the more competition we can get from around the world, the better we all get. It's like Carlos there in lane, uh, I'm sorry, Diego from Mexico in lane five is leading this heat. You can see the different styles of butterfly, the different adaptations these athletes have made to keep their stroke both legal and fast. This is one of the final steps on the City Para Swimming World Series. So the athletes are taking advantage of all of the opportunities to get either they're here to get an international classification and get that all taken care of before the Paris Paralympic Games, or they're here to swim best times to be considered for their federation or their country's teams, or a combination of both. <laughs> it's also good to travel internationally whenever you can afford it and, and find the time to go so that when you do make the Paralympic Games, all that travel and all those inconveniences and all those variables are normal. It's very hard to make that first trip be such a big swim meet. So it's great that all of these federations are bringing their athletes to the City Paris Swimming World Series. It provides a great opportunity for all of these athletes. That is Diego in lane five, finishing first in a 130.04. We've got uh, Carlos Hernandez finishing his swim there in lane three, 146.60. That was heat one of five of the men's preliminary heats of the 100 meter butterfly. You can see three distinct different butterflies happening there. Outstanding effort, so you never want to raise that head higher than your bottom lip just want to go up high enough to get some air and keep breathing. Great swim out of heat one. In heat two, we'll have Gianni Mercado in lane two. Nathan Alfaro from Costa Rica in lane three. In lane four, Isaac Barton from the United States. The rest of the swimmers in this heat are from the US. Lucas Colada in lane five. Austin Taylor in six and Marcus Vital in lane number seven. See their names and their classifications there on the screen. Get that second whistle, they're stepping up on the blocks. Taking their various positions. You'll notice that officials hold them for different amounts of time between saying take your marks and starting the race. That is for a number of factors. Very well seasoned officials will change the cadence of that so that, an, so that an athlete needs to just come down and hold and not be able to time it. Another reason is they may be waiting for the entire heat to get still before they start the race. We did not get 50 splits on this one. But lanes four and five, Isaac and Lucas are battling it out stroke for stroke. 
Isaac's got a little edge there with about 25 meters to go. In that last 25 meters, this is where you, you need to train really well to stay on autopilot because if you swam the first 75 meters well, you don't have a lot of energy to add to the finish. So establishing that stroke rhythm, good solid kick if you have it, and it looks like Isaac has it, 115.72. Just behind him, Lucas Collada from the United States is in the wall at a 118.50. Third, Austin Tyler. Tyler Austin, uh, start they all get away pretty quick establishing that stroke rhythm early some good easy speed turned relatively together it was a race in the middle and the race on the outside of those guys and then Isaac took it over there with about five meters left he's up by about two body lengths good swim See the Indiana University Natatorium, legendary venue for the sport of swimming in the United States. And an exciting place for this heat three of five to be swimming. The guys are all behind the blocks. In lane one, Sawyer Mills from the United States. From Mexico, Octavio Ramirez Velasquez. In lane three, David Gelfand from the United States, also from the US. Trevor Lucasco in lane four. Daniel Geraldo Correa in lane five from Colombia. Canadian swimmer Hunter Elberg in lane six, Aaron Thomas in lane seven, and from Canada, Antonio Fricano in lane eight. This is heat three of five, just dove in the water. And looks like we've got a, an early race from lanes two, four, and five. It's already separated itself, and it looks like Trevor Lukasko is coming into this race meaning business. He can swim really any distance very well, so that bodes well. If he can get out fast in this Hunter Butterfly, he should not have a problem closing. And I don't mean that to sound like it will be easy for him to finish this race. This is a grueling swim, but he's got the training and he's got the technique and he's got the will to stay ahead. He's got about 25 meters left to go. That's Trevor Lukasko out in front of this third heat men's 100 meter butterfly. Next to him is Daniel Correa from Colombia. He had a really good day yesterday, but this one is Trevor Lucasco at a 1.0055. And that's just five one hundredths slower than his entry time. So I think he's gonna be pretty pleased with that. Rounding out the heat. Daniel Correa from Colombia in a time of 103.34 was second, and then third in that heat was David Gelfand from the United States at 107.56. You can see the, the second column after the country is their, uh, I'm trying to figure out what that column is. Those numbers don't mean a lot to me right now. <laughs> and then their place in that heat and then their final time. That would not be their points because those are all over a thousand, which would make those all world records, which they were not. So well, I'm gonna ask downstairs what that column is. But there's Trevor getting out right away, real early, taking that heat right from the start, really. A little close in the first couple of strokes, but there is no doubt the way he is landing forward with his body 
his whole body lunges forward, and, he, and the timing of his kick is what presses him fast forward. Trevor Lukasko, great swim, 1-0-0-55. That takes us now out to our heat number four. Heat number four in lane one, Jesse Grieve from the US, also from the United States, Emmett Martin in lane two. In lane three, Jean-Paul Bernard Tritard Godfrey from Mexico. In lane four, that is David Abrams. In lane five, Yassin El Demerdash. His first, first time we see those two guys in this meet. Evan Wilkerson in lane six. Lane seven, Ryan Edelman and Noah Bush in lane number eight. David Abrams and Yassine El Demerdash will probably pull away from the heat here. Good experienced pair of swimmers from the United States. And that is, we're not getting that first split, but that was Yassine El Demerdash out in front. Looks like David is starting to make a little move. Yassine, I know, trains, <laughs> trains for just about any distance. Lane three right now, Jean-Paul Bernard is coming up and could take the heat, but I think he is going to. Came up from behind there in that last 15 meters, picked up his tempo, and as I talked about pretty much all day yesterday, if you can pick up your tempo and hold on to your stroke length in the last 15 to 20 meters, you're gonna, you're gonna make a move on whoever might be in the lead or you're gonna lengthen your lead. He was in the wall at 103.32, second at 103.42, just one tenth behind was you seen, and then you see David Abrams there in third at 104.70. Moving on to our final heat in just a minute. Those were outstanding swims for those guys. Um, not real close to any of their best times, but uh, those are some butterfly specialists. And the butterfly, to really be at your best in the 100, generally needs a full taper, which is a rest period of anywhere from three to 10 days, depending on your physiology. And I don't think anybody's resting that full taper for this meet as our various countries are getting ready for their own trials. Some of them are using this meet as their selection. All kinds of things happening. We'll, uh, we're in for a little bit of a treat in this heat. In lane one from Mexico, Nestor Hernandez Ramirez. In lane two from the United States, Owen McNear. Javier Hernandez Rodriguez from Puerto Rico is in lane three. Lawrence Sapp is in lane four. Watch his get away from that wall and be underwater very fast at his dolphin kick. Jeff Lovett will be challenging him the whole way, I can guarantee you that, in lane five from the U.S. Braxton Wong, I have a little inside information that Braxton is has done a, some rest before this meet, so we'll see what he brings to the 100 fly in lane six. Walker mm -hmm. Keithley in lane seven, and Irving Luna Contreras in lane number eight. This is the final heat of the men's 100 meter butterfly mixed class. Watch Lawrence get away really fast, and then we'll see his underwater, his dolphin kick is truly world class. And there he, there he does it. He does it every time, so I just like to point it out but who's gonna give him a lot of trouble the whole way, if he can, is Jeff Lovett in lane five. That's Lawrence Sapp out in the lead of this last heat of the men's 100 meter butterfly. Swims a, just swims a beautiful butterfly. And he's, if we get the split here, he's right around 27 seconds out in the first 50. We're not getting accurate splits right now at the, at the 50 wall. He is lengthening his lead as he approaches that 75 meter mark. He's just got 25 meters left to go. Jeff Lovett there just above him is swimming a great swim, but this is all Lawrence Sapp. 
out in the lead in lane number four. His best time is 56-1. He's probably not too rested for this beat. He's in the wall at 58-52. Just behind him, Jeff Lovett at a 101-90. Third in that heat up in lane two is Owen McNear from the United States in a 106-28. Great race from all of those guys. Had a, a fist pump there in lane two. That's Owen McNear. 106.28 was his time, and he entered at a 107.85. So he's uh, he's about a second and a half faster, and if that puts him closer to the world record in his classification, we may see him get to do that in the finals again tonight. I hope so. That finishes up the men's 100-meter butterfly. We now move on to the women's 400-meter freestyle. So the 200 yesterday was 450s, and this one is 850s. Great swimming by all those guys. Now we're moving on to the 400, and this is the longest distance contested at the Paralympic Games. So we're going to see, we're going to have a treat when we get to our last heat. It's going to be a kind of a who's who of the 400 freestyle when we get there. And then all of these races on the way are the up and coming or the masters of their own classifications. In, a, in heat one from Mexico, name Naomi Somiera Mandejano in lane number six. That's Riley Bossler in lane four from the United States. And Nomen Kurel from Mongolia in lane five. Yes, Mongolia. Swimmers are coming here from all over the world. There's a little over 200 swimmers in this meet. This is the largest U.S. stop uh, in the Para Swimming World Series history over the years. We have not had over 200 swimmers. And 90, I think 93 or 94 of those swimmers have come from other countries. So this is a, this is a fantastic event. We always thank City for sponsoring this event around the world. Heat one is off the blocks. There are so many things to talk about, thank goodness, in the 400 freestyle. A, a kind of a new 400 freestyler will just kind of go and uh, rely on hope and training. Um, that's not the best method. As they get a little bit more experience, they start to take it out kind of fast and relaxed and then settle into a pace. That's kind of what we're seeing from all three of these swimmers, they got away from the blocks pretty well as they head towards that first 50 wall. You can see they're settling into a nice long pace, keeping their stroke out in front. Keeping an arm out in front like that helps you balance, and then you don't have to rely on a, much of a kick if you can maintain your balance in your freestyle. If you look at the, the body of the swimmer and you put it, them into quadrants or quarters, that front quadrant is where you want your arms to be as long as possible. And you can't just leave them out there or you're just kicking. But you can see that she's holding an arm out in front, dropping her hand into her catch as the other arm recovers and then takes over being out in front, reaching into her catch. You're watching Naomi there going under the flags into her first turn. She's here from Mexico. Nice turn, great streamline away from the wall. She takes that first breath, but that's a long way to streamline. So in this in this heat, as long as you're, or in this race distance, as long as you're not taking your body out of alignment, you can take that breath out of a turn. And I've just probably angered a lot of coaches who are trying to teach some more discipline in younger swimmers, but at this level, we're probably already into the habits that they're going to bring to a Paralympic Games or the highest level that they reach. Naomi is handling this heat. Naomi's here from Mexico. She's going into her 150 turn. Just behind her from the U.S., that's Riley Bossler, who's heading towards those red marked lane lines. That means you got five meters away from the wall.
for most people, this is not that exciting an event, but I love watching how the different athletes use different strategies in this race. Naomi had a good solid start, kind of fell right into a, the pace that she's holding now. And I think she's gonna be able to maintain this most of the way. If she's, she's pretty experienced at this race, it's obvious by the way she's swimming it. What we'll see is a little more kick after this next 100. So she's 303 at the 200. We'll see how, see how that holds up pace wise. 312.96 for Riley at the 200. That's the halfway mark. And we're gonna, based on having many diff different classifications in these races, we're gonna see swimmers at all different paces. Using all different techniques of freestyle to get through this 400. Naomi has this heat well in hand. We'll see she is in the S7 classification, which as we'll see later in the heats, there's quite a few quite fast S7 swimmers in the later heats. We'll see where her time stacks up. She's entered at a no time, so she may just put herself into the position to get a second swim tonight. We've got So we should be getting some splits here. This is Naomi's finishing her third 100. 134 was her 100 time there. She's at 438, so she's, she's holding a pretty strong pace, holding it pretty even. This is where, and you can see, as I said before, is when she'll start to bring her, her feet into the race a little bit more. As you fatigue in this race, your upper body starts to get pretty darn tired and you start to lose some of your upper body balance. Just the action of kicking downward with your feet will help you regain some of that balance. So kicking isn't always propulsive. At, at times, the harder you kick, the faster you can go. But it's not just your feet making you go faster. It's your, your kick is overcoming an imbalance by pushing your upper body downward. Good old physics. You can't fight physics and you can't fake fitness. So this is a, a great event to, to showcase that. Naomi's in her last 50. Riley just turned at her 350 wall. Right now, the swimmers are at about 550. Naomi's got about 20 meters left in this race, 15 now. Really swimming a, a well put together 400. Remember she was 303 at the halfway, so we've just passed even splitting. Would have been 606, she's 611. And, and so what she did in that race, she's pretty experienced in that race, so I wish she would have uh, entered with her time so she could have been in a later heat. She actually did what's called negative splitting on her second 200. So her third, her fourth 100 was faster than her third 100. And that's the result of what she did with her kick. Because you don't really have a lot of energy to speed up with your upper body. So if you can just bring in your kick, if you are able at the, the last quarter of the race, which is the whole last 100 of a 400, you can do what she just did. But going 303 out and then finishing the race in a 611, that was an outstanding swim. Don't want to take anything away from Riley Bossler. Very good swim for her. Her entry time was 641 and she went 627. So I think we saw a big personal best time there for her. In the water there, you're watching from Mongolia, all the way from Mongolia, Nomun Kurel. 
She's just 17 years old. She entered this race with a 713.35. And she's coming into her last 25 meters here. Got to give it up for the, the distance events, especially when it's in the middle of the meet. So you have that first day. You have the first day, everybody gets that first race or the first couple races under their belt. And then we move on to day two where we really are working business. She's 751. Namun Kurel from Mongolia was 751. And that completes our first heat of five of the 200, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the 400 meter freestyle. See that column with a 1331, three, one. that was 133. Remember she was 134, I believe, in her third 100. Here they are getting away from the blocks. When a distance swimmer has a fast start, that's usually an indicator to a coach that they're really ready to go. <laughs> a lot of times they'll just, you know, when that horn goes off, they'll just, okay, I'm just gonna dive in now and then we'll get going and see how this goes. Naomi was all over it right from the start. Even with the race not being that close, it was uh, an outstanding swim from Riley Bossler from the U.S. where she dropped almost 20 seconds in that race. She goes into her finish. That was Naomi Mandahano from Mexico going a 6.11 in her 400 freestyle. On to heat two of five, Diana Jimenez Martinez from Mexico in lane three, in lane two, I'm sorry, in lane three from the U.S., that's Maya Dillingham. Sarah Miranda Corrales from Costa Rica is in lane four. From Mexico in lane five, Diana Torres Claudio. Chiara Bauer from the U.S. in lane six, and in lane seven from Mexico, Nesbeth Vasquez Mieja. Now, we, I talked a lot about race strategy in that first race we'll see who matches up to that race strategy in this race well this is such a great pool we've already had a world record this morning in the men's 50 meter butterfly with Samastia and Masabli going a 39.51, really knocking that world record out a bit. We're in heat two of the women's 400 meter freestyle. That world record was 40.48, so that 39.5, that's almost a full second faster than the previous world record. So he kind of made an announcement this morning to some of us that he was going for it, looked at his coach, <laughs> gave the nod like this might be the day and then he followed through so it's always great when an athlete prepares for something big like that and then they go and knock that swim out just as they predicted in lane five in this heat out in front is diana maria torres claudio from mexico she's entered at a 617 so we'll see what her early first 100 pace is as she gets to the 100 wall she hits the wall at 122.9. And when we'll be getting 100 meter splits from this race along the way. Right behind her, both at 125s, was Maya Dillingham and Diana Laura, I believe, in lane, yeah, lanes two and three. She's got a good balanced freestyle. See, she holds both arms out in front, getting that body balance. From the tip of your head to the tip of your toes, we call that line the long axis for freestyle and backstroke. And we want our athletes to rotate on that long axis and you can see that Diana from Mexico is doing that quite well. Uh, 
That's Sarah Miranda Corrales from Costa Rica in lane number four. Just behind, kind of at, at the hip of our leader. And then she's got somebody just behind her. We'll see where they are overall. And as far as splits, these two are hitting the wall pretty close together. 257.6 and 257.9. 134 and 132, so that was Maya Dillingham from the U.S. making a move. Oh, cool. Bringing herself up almost shoulder to shoulder with our early leader, okay. Diana Claudio. swimming pretty much stroke for stroke across the pool. Maya looks like she may have taken an edge in that 50. We do have some butterfly results. Um, we can't really parse them out as to who will be in which heat, so I don't know that it makes a lot of sense to announce those to you. They're just scrolling them up on the big board uh, because they've got to separate those into an A final, a B final, and an 18 under youth final. So we'll let the admin desk do that. And as soon as they get that information, I will pass it along to you if they get to that finished before the end of our session. Back in this race though, we have a new leader that is Maya Dillingham from the United States in lane number three. That split was 132. We'll keep track of that. They've got 100 to go. Maya's entry time was 6.17.8, so we'll see if she's going to beat that. Feeling challenged and taking on the challenge. Diana from Mexico is brought her legs into the race, so she's got a little bit of an advantage there. If she's bringing her kick, she might get some extra balance. But Maya Dillingham's really not letting her have anything. She's holding her lead. She's about, about a body length, a little less than a body length ahead. They turn into that last 50. They're at about 5.30 now. Looks like Maria has, in lane five, has retaken her lead, but just by about a shoulder length, maybe an arm's length out in front. Maya very intelligently is breathing towards her to try to, try to remain in the challenge, but I think there's not gonna be enough pool left, and this is gonna be Maria Torres Claudio from Mexico taking this heat. She entered at a 6.17. And she's in the wall at 5.58. So these are big drops for these, for these young women. Maya Dillingham, second at 5.59.44. So she, she didn't get to hold on to that win after that big push, but they really pushed each other, and they're giving each other a thumbs up there after that race. Outstanding to see the sportsmanship across all of the borders. There really aren't any borders once you get to the swim meet. Gave each other the thumbs up after that race. Nesbeth Marlene Vasquez Mieja there in lane number seven, finishing up her 400 freestyle. Uh, not getting a time for her, but that was certainly a great battle for first and second with the lead changing two or three times throughout the race. Thanks to those women for a great and educational race. We've got some results here from the women's 50 meter butterfly. This is the overall points results and then these athletes will be kind of parsed out into an 18 and under heat and then an A and B final for tonight. So Mallory Wegeman has the closest time to a world record in her classification. 
and Ayano from Japan has 865 points, which is just behind Mallory. So it'll be a it'll be a neat battle tonight as they just kind of splash and dash butterfly down the pool. And on the men's side, uh, 956. Uh, but we do know that that was a world record, so I'm, I, I think that points, those points now are actually a thousand for him, I believe. I'm sure I'll be corrected if I'm incorrect. Um, but Sebastian Massaby, I know it, on the big picture, it's, it's still unofficial. It has to be ratified by World Para Swimming, but 956 points in any event is world class, and he just swam that faster than anybody in his classification ever has. So. Congratulations to him and all the athletes that will be competing in that final tonight. We're in heat three now, and Casey Freeman is in lane one from the U.S. Actually, it's mostly a U.S. heat all the way to lane five. Ellie Marks is in lane two. McLean Hermes is in three in lane four. Ahalia Lettenberger in lane five. May White in lane six from Mexico. Paola Nunez. In lane seven from Peru, Michaela Abegestu. In lane number eight from Mexico, that is Matilda Figueroa. Um, I have the honor of helping coach McLean Hermes in lane three. And her, her race plan was not very technical for this one. It's more of just a race practice. Um, I know what we worked on for her for this, but I asked her what her mindset is before the race. And she said, I actually want to use my, my US teammate, Ahalia Lettenberger. I'm gonna try and just kind of stick with her through the first 200, 250, maybe to the 300, and then, and then try to make a move. So we'll see how that plays out in lanes three and four. Um, seems to be what's happening right now, but McLean has got a slight lead in front of her. I have been talking to you about heat number four. <laughs> hey, I'm only human and I'm only me up here. So I just got prompted that I'm looking at the wrong, the wrong, the wrong cyclist. <clears throat> this is heat three in the pool. I'm gonna go through those names now. I think I, I confused myself in giving you those exciting butterfly results. Vianney Delgadillo from Mexico is in lane one, Emilia Chanis is in lane two. That's Liberty Freeman from the U.S. in lane number three. And Nicole Berlowski in lane four from Mexico. Julia Gaffney in lane five. And Britt Conrad in six. In lane seven, Naomi Mendez from Mexico and from Canada. In lane eight, Ali Deal. So uh, my blunder was international there. So hopefully you can forgive me and we can move on and I can start calling this race. In lane three, Doing what McLean was going to try to do is actually Emilia, that's Liberty Freeman in lane three leading this heat. My apologies. We'll see where they are at the halfway part. Liberty's entry time is 540.3. So we'll see how her pace is doing for that. Just divide that by four, kind of, and you'll know her average pace. I think I was pretty excited about that heat four and I just wanted to move on to it. So I apologize again and I'll stop apologizing. Liberty is in the lead. She went 126.5 on that fi on that hundred. She's at, at her halfway point. It's really anybody's race because when we get into that last 100 and 150, um, people will make different moves at different times. Sometimes they get you get caught up in a race with the person next to you or the person across from the pool, or you possibly have the discipline to just stick within yourself and swim your own race strategy. Or you have a combination of all those things happening. So just about anything can happen in the 400 freestyle. One thing that can't happen is you you have to come to this race with a great fitness level. 
they certainly are as they're staying together. The lead has not changed, but the swimmers that are second, third, and fourth there, that's they're kind of changing positions. They're starting to line back up as they get ready to begin their last 100. See, they're jockeying for position on what they're going to do. That's a coach's perspective. If you ask them, they may not even know where the other athletes are in this race, sometimes when they get in their own mind. I think they're pretty aware, though, because they see each other's caps and they know that they're pretty close. Our clear leader right now in lane six is Britt Conrad. Julia Gaffney's making a move up to that three-person race. She's in lane five right next to Britt. And now our swimmer, Naomi Mendez from Mexico is making a move up in lane six. So how a lot of 50s begin, a lot of 400s finish where they, they swim different paces throughout the race and they start to line themselves back up for that final 50. This looks like it's gonna be an exciting finish. If anybody can get up to Brit, um, that will be a, a great feat. And if anybody's gonna do it, it looks like Nicole Brilovsky is making the, the best move right now. Julia Gaffney is just swimming strong and steady and just keeps picking off those other girls. I wouldn't be surprised if Julia may finish second in this heat unless um, Naomi over in lane seven doesn't allow that to happen. Now making the move in lane four, that's Nicole Brilovsky from Mexico. Looks like she's putting herself in, in second position. First here to the wall though is Britt Conrad from the United States, 538-2. Berlowski from Mexico in 541-41, and just behind her in third is Julia Gaffney. Julia swam a, a great kind of almost hidden first 300 to 350 and slowly chipped away at those leads. Not sure where she is in her training right there, uh, but with a, a little more rest for this meet, she would have definitely had the energy to pop up there and almost win that heat. When Julia is at her best, look out. <laughs> Not saying she isn't at her best, but I think she's at her best for the training that she's doing right now. She's spending her, spending her training time at the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Training Center as part of the resident training team there. Allie Deal from Canada brought up the end of that heat. Don't have a time for her. You look at that column that looks like a 12 and another, or a 13 and another number. That's actually their 100 splits. So it's not a 12.83, it's a 128.3 there in lane one. I'll try to call as many of those intermediate splits as I can. Okay, Coach John, now here's the heat that you started calling in the last heat. <laughs> See those moves that were made in that last 50 Nicole Brailovsky tried to make a big move on Julia and almost pushed herself up there with Britt, but that was all Britt at a 538.20. She entered the event with a 543, so she had a nice time drop there from her entry time. Okay, now I'll repeat how I introduced that last race. This is Casey Freeman in lane one. Elizabeth Marks in two, McLean Hermes in three, Ahalia Lettenberger in four, May White in five, Paola Ruvacava Nunez from Mexico in six, from Peru, Michaela Epes de Gui, and in lane number eight, from Mexico, Matilda Alcazar Figueroa. Here we go with heat number four of the women's 400 meter freestyle. So now I talked a little bit about McLean Hermes in lane three. She was gonna move over to the lane line and see if she could just kind of hang with Ahalia next to her. So she's certainly not waiting for Ahalia to get there. She's swimming a good aggressive first 50. In the black cap there on the corner of your screen is Elizabeth Marks. She looks like she has probably 
not quite the lead, but in second to our swimmer in lane seven. That is Michaela Ape Apestigui from Peru. Hits the wall first in about 36, 37 seconds. We're getting the 100 splits, not the 50 splits as they go. As far as a first 100 of the 400 freestyle, this is pretty much a dead even heat because of all the different lead changes that will probably occur. Swimmers in five, six, and seven, excuse me, five, six, and seven are swimming a little bit more aggressively here in the first 100, and they're gonna be in that 114 range, 115 and 116s, that's May White in lane five in the early lead at 115.8, 116.0 and 116.0 for Paula and Michaela for Mexico and Peru in lane six and seven. So they've got a, we've got a pretty even race there in five, six, and seven, and a pretty even race there in one through four and eight. So we'll just kind of watch what they do Yeah, I was talking a little bit about McLean's race strategy here. She knows what Ahalia next to her who just turned is capable of. That's McLean in lane number three. Lane one is the bottom of your screen. Lane eight is the top of your screen. And as far as a strategy that I know very well and probably don't like it as a coach that she's relying on what Ahalia is doing and then she's going to try to move away in the last 100 to 150 meters. But the race in this heat is heating up in lanes five and six. That's May White in five and Paola Nunez from Mexico in lane six. May White's at a 120 flat, as is Paola. There were 235 and 236 at the 200. May has pulled ahead a little bit more. But every time she makes that move, Paola responds. She's got her, May's got Paola at her hip right now. They're very wisely swimming right in the center of their lane so that nobody could move over and, and take a ride. The, the eddy currents that follow your body just past your hip if a swimmer next to you gets in there right on the lane line, right past your hip, they're actually doing a little less work working in the water movement that you're creating. So very wisely, May is not letting that happen for Paola. Paola has to do her own work to try to keep up. May's got about two body, body and a half length lead. Coming into the 300 now. May's entry time was 5.17, so we'll keep an eye on how she's doing against that. She's 3.56 at a 1.20. So she'll be, she'll be pretty close to her entry time. Now you can see her just kind of pull away. She's holding her pace. I think Paola might be falling off her pace a little bit. Over on the left of your screen, that's a Holly Lettenberger in the black cap with the white cap right next to her to her left is McLean. Ahalia has made that move for the last 100 and McLean is picked up her kick to try to keep with her. Right now though, it's May White going into her last turn. That's 350 meters. She gets out nice and long and streamlined. She's really just picked up her tempo a bit. She has not lost any of her stroke length which is exactly what world-class athletes do. When you want to go faster when you're tired, you cannot afford to sacrifice any of your stroke length. But the challenge is to hold that stroke length and increase your tempo, you know, your tempo or your, your stroke rate. So she's done that very successfully. She was holding about 120 per 100. For this last 100, she hits the wall at a 119 and she's five, 15.45, so she's two seconds under that entry time. She's really happy with that swim. 
I know that she has, uh, she's got a double thumbs up there for us. Um, she was working hard for that race in her prep for this meet. So congratulations to Mae White for having all that work pay off. Coming in second was Paola from Mexico. She was 5.20.29. Third in that heat was a Holly Lettenberger at a 5.25.16. So great racing. Everybody's doing a, a little bit of a different race strategy. They all have a different strategy that they bring to the race. But overall, the best way to swim that 400 is to get out off the blocks pretty fast, establish yourself in the first 20 to 25 meters without doing too much powerful swimming and then continue to just hold a nice, long, steady pace. Um, certainly not by slowing down at all, but hold that long, steady pace. When you get to about the 250 to the 300, you have to make a move on yourself, whether that comes from an increased kick or a little bit faster tempo without sacrificing stroke length. You bring that into the last 100 to 150 and you should have a pretty darn good swim if you have the fitness level to back it up. <laughs> nice swim out of heat four. Heat five coming up. Got some pretty seasoned Paralympians in this final heat. Um, all except for one swimmer is from the United States. Audrey Kim is in lane one. In lane two, Taz Pagonis. In lane three, Keegan Knott. In lane four, Alexandra Truitt. In lane five, from Mexico, Silvana Lopez Moreno. In lane six, Kelly Prochaska. In lane seven, Jessica Long. And that is Mackenzie Cohen in lane number eight. This is the final heat of the women's 400 meter freestyle to go to my other screen here to look at records to see how see how close anybody might get. I haven't heard of any record attempts for the 400 and you a lot of times you wouldn't see the record attempts in the prelims. Um, again, as, as much as they've spread out a bit, this is a, a pretty even heat early. And leading it is Alexandra Truitt from the U.S. in lane number four. And she's swimming very aggressively, very early. We'll see if she settles that stroke in or if she is just a swimmer that swims with fast tempo all the way through the race. The, the story shows the honesty of for whatever reason, Audrey Kim is not swimming in this race. I think there was a switch in here. In the S11 um, classification, that's a VI, which stands for visually impaired. Um, they actually have the right to ask to move lanes no matter where they may be seated. And I think there was some movement in this heat. Taspagonis is in lane two, holding a nice solid pace, but out in front of this race, that is Alexandra Truitt from the US. She entered at a 455.11, and she's still holding that nice strong pace. She is what I call a creature of tempo. You can see she is swimming with a good long balance stroke. Her shoulders are a little high, her hips are a little low, but that is by design. If, your if you can swim with your shoulders a little high and your hips a little low, then you have the capacity to swim with a higher tempo. And a lot of swimmers at the 400 and 800 distances are maybe higher tempo swimmers and not that long, efficient swim, but they can keep that tempo going for the whole race. And it looks like Alexandra Truitt fits right into that category. She's really put the heat behind her. You can see there's still some good racing there for second, third, and fourth. Everybody's pretty close to together. Um, it, it, it only takes a 50 of making a move to surpass two or three swimmers that are within a body length of you. 
in the 400 freestyle. Alexander Truitt is not going to let anybody catch her. Turning there in lane three, that's Keegan Knott. Keegan swims at the University of Northern Arizona with Andy Johns, Larry Leibovitz. Give you guys a shout out. Um, so where she has an advantage in her swimming is the University of Northern Arizona is one of the pools in America that it's at a very high altitude. So she's about three or four days into being here. So her blood chemistry is welcoming all the oxygen she's getting right now uh, without getting too deep into the science. So you're gonna see Keegan have a pretty good 400 freestyle here. She had a best time in the 100 in the morning and in the afternoon yesterday. So she is definitely focused and prepared for this meet. Alexander Truitt's out in front though by almost 20 meters. Not gonna be challenged for the overall race, but this is all actually being calculated into how close you are to the world record in your classification. It's always fun when you're the swimmer going the other way in front of everybody. It's very motivating when you just have a, a 50 left and uh, you're 25 meters ahead of the ahead of the crowd. Very few swimmers get to do that. Katie Ledecky over on the Olympic side, Katie Grimes over on the Olympic side, they get to see that a lot. And right now we have Alexandra Truitt doing that. Swimmer from the U.S. about to hit the wall in a 442. 442, she entered at a 455. That was a remarkable swim, and she did it right from the start. You saw her press herself away from everyone. Outstanding swim for Alexandra. Second there was Keegan from the University of Northern Arizona. 457-53. She entered with a 4.58.2, so there's another best time as far as her entry times. So these two really dominating their outstanding swims. I'm gonna look over to see what that world record would be in the S10s for Alexandra. She's still got, she's still got a a county or a country to go before she gets into that world record territory of 424. But what a great move she's making on it. She's just 20 seconds and, and that doesn't have to, doesn't have to be as far away as it may appear. <laughs> great swim for Alexandra, all the way through that swim. See how fast she just brings her tempo through. She holds a body position that can handle that fast of a tempo. And it's generally a higher shoulders and a little bit lower hips. The lower hips on there will anchor your body well so that you can rotate your shoulders high and fast. That concludes the women's 400 meter freestyle. On to the men. Heat one of three, Jonathan Hernandez Gonzalez in lane number one from Mexico. Gianni Mercado from the United States in lane two. Jan Babayuski in lane three. From Canada, Leo Zheng in lane four. In lane five, Angel Castan Gomez. In lane six from the US, Marcus Vital. And in lane seven from Mexico, Carlos Roca Hernandez. This is heat one of three of the men's S6 to S13 400 meter freestyle. Great racing, great strategy, ability to use the type of physiology you have. That's what we've seen so far in the 400 freestyle. Let's see what the men bring us. So lane two is out to a, a pretty early lead. Looks pretty aggressive. We'll see if he can hold that. That's Gianni Mercado from the US. And the rest of the heat, though a little scattered, as I said before, the, they're all pretty even because they all bring a different race strategy to the 400. Only two of the swimmers in this heat, uh, lane one and lane seven, come 
to this race with no time for their entry. So everybody else will have a means to, to compare. Looks like everybody's settled into a nice long stroke. Gianni has settled his stroke tempo down a little bit. So maybe he can hold on to that lead. A strategy for the, some of the best 400 freestylers in history comes from the uh, basically an Australian textbook of how to do the 400. The best swimmers from Australia in the 400 meter freestyle will generally race the first 15 to 30 meters quite fast, put a little space between themselves and the competition, and then kind of settle into a pace similar to the competition, but they're doing it from four, five, six meters ahead. That's, a, that's an emotional blow when you didn't go with them at the beginning. Then they'll hold that same pace, and uh, they certainly train for the back half of the swim. So Australia is very hard to catch in a race like this. They're not here at this meet. We send our regards out to Australia Para Swimming, and we wish you could have been here. Always great to have you as competitors at these meets. Melbourne just hosted one of the City Para Swimming World Series events, so I think they probably the bulk of their athletes swam at that event. The a Paralympic year is a very expensive year for a federation, so if you have one at home, you definitely want to load it up and get all the swimming you can done there. I want to thank City for sponsoring the City Para Swimming Series, the World Series. This stop of the U.S. is in Indianapolis. We're here at the Indiana University Natatorium, a legendary place to swim for all who come to town. Really holding a lead well out in front of everyone is Gianni Mercado here from the US over in lane two. The rest of the heat seems to be spreading out a bit. Everybody kind of just kind of taking care of their own business in their lane, not falling into any races yet with anybody next to them. Gianni was uh, a little under three minutes in that at that split. Most of this heat is anywhere from 6.15 to 6.32, so they may start to come back together as they approach this second half of the race. See, it really won't take a big change for any of these swimmers behind the lead to move up and challenge for the challenge for second or third. Nobody wants to be racing for second or third, but uh, Gianni Mercado is not allowing anyone to get close to him. He, he went out pretty fast. He's holding on pretty strong now. We'll see if he has another gear for his last 100. He's got about a 25 left in this 100. Coach John's taken over a little bit. If we could make him a little more efficient, if we could get that bottom goggle to stay in the water, and he just tilted his chin a little bit to get the breath. See how he's lifting his head out of the water to get that breath? That kind of makes his, his shoulder drop on that right side. He can get a little bit more efficient if he can just kind of roll into his breath rather than lift. I don't always get good feedback when I turn into Coach John on these on these live streams, but our goal when we started this whole project of getting on the live stream, Aaron Popovich and I sat down and talked about, we're not gonna take these opportunities to call the exciting races as exciting races. We're gonna take all the opportunity in the world to just try to translate for everyone watching what they're seeing on the screen. So using my coaching background to talk about the different techniques that you can do, the different race strategies, and I'm trying to talk to as many swimmers and coaches during the breaks as I can so I can learn what their strategies are so I have something a little more intelligent to talk about. Going into this next turn, those uh, guys racing for second, third, fourth, and fifth are about to make their turn. 
in lane six. That is Marcus Vital. Looks like he's going to hold on for second in this heat. But uh, look at the big finish there. 551.01 for Gianni Mercado. 126.5 on his last 50. Good swim for him. And we look back at the, at the races that are forming in the rest of the heat. In lane six. That is Marcus Vital coming in for his finish. He's got about five meters to go. He's held that nice long stroke rhythm the whole way through that 400. Nice job to Marcus Vital, 6.17.07. And he entered that race with a 6.21. So that's the best time for him. Then lane four, five, and one finished up. First though is Gianni Mercado, 5.51.01. Second again was Marcus Vital, and third in that heat was Leo Zhang from Canada. Leo swam that in a 625.53, with his last 100 being a 140.6. All kinds of things going on, lots to talk about in the 400 freestyle. Uh, this is when the sprinters stop watching and the, they kind of take their naps. They see the distance events as something that they just have to live through while these 400 swimmers are really getting their due and getting the opportunity to swim their 400 freestyle twice today. Heat two coming up. In lane one, Diego Efren Magna Vasquez. In lane two, Sean Grady. Lane three, Juan Jose Gutierrez Bermudez. Yeah, he and his brother are, again are in this heat. In lane four, Diego Alexandro Gonzalez Andrade. In lane five, Isaac Barton from the US, from Mexico. Juan Jose's brother Raul Gutierrez Ramirez in lane six. Cyrus Kay in lane seven from the United States, and again his teammate from the US, Connor Giofreda. Now, Connor's sister gave me permission, which I don't think was official permission to pick on her brother as much as I wanted to in this race. I, cl I clearly, I don't want to. <laughs> Connor trains with her training, with his training partner, Ellie Marks, at the US Olympic and Paralympic Training Center. And they are swimming at the same time as the team that I am coaching, which is the US paratriathlon team. So I see the hard work that Connor's putting in every day. So he gets a break. I'm not going to pick on him much. Heat two up on the blocks. This is the 400 meter freestyle multi-class S6 to S13. And there they go. That's Connor up at the top of your screen in lane eight. And lane one is at the bottom of your screen. That's Diego Vasquez. Lane two, early push from Sean Grady in lane two, 18-year-old from the United States. Definitely going to try to push things for himself here. His entry time was 5.26.8, so we'll see what he does against that. He is either one of those swimmers that wants to just go out fast and try to hold on, or he's got big plans for this swim. His tempo is settling in a little bit. The rest of the heat is already settled into a little more smooth tempo than they took out in that first 50. But Sean Grady is about five meters, three, three to five meters ahead of the rest of the heat there. He's on the left of your screen in lane number two. Now on the bottom of your screen, he is gonna be around that 110, 111 range in the first 100. He's 111.3 at the first 100. So if you did the math, he would blow away 526. We'll see if he's bringing the fitness to be able to do that. Generally, swimmers in the 400 won't be able to hold the pace that they put out in the first 100 unless it's an enormous breakthrough swim for them. But um, he settled into a looks like a good controlled swim. In the middle of the pool there, in second, that is lane five, 
Isaac Barton from the U.S. He's, if he could hold that freestyle out in front a slightly longer amount of time on each stroke, he'd be a little bit more efficient and be able to bring some speed to the end. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a sway back and forth rather than a, a clear, even rotation. That could be coming from something he's working on. That could be coming from the abilities that he brings to this race. So not being critical, just be trying to be educational. But he, what he's doing right now is making a move on Sean Grady that took it out pretty fast. Sean Grady was out in 111, and now he's at 123. So Sean may have taken it about out a little bit fast unless that's what he needs to do to settle into a 120, a low 120 pace. Isaac Barton, though, is slowly chipping away at Sean Grady's lead. Isaac Barton is in lane five. Sean Grady there is in lane two with the lead right now. Swimmer from lane six, Raul Bermudez is starting to make a little bit of a tempo move on Isaac in lane five. But they're all kind of pressing forward and about to take the lead over. Isaac's about, I think he's taking the lead over from Sean. So we'll see what these guys are holding as a pace. But Isaac has taken over the lead. He's out in front now. Sean there is holding on nice and strong, but maybe that first hundred might have cost him a little bit. Now you see Raul Bermudez in the red cap also making a move. And then Juan Gutierrez in lane three is also staying in that mix. These guys are at the 300 here. So we'll see who can, who can bring a, an, another new gear of tempo into this last 100. Some of them wait for the last 50. Some of them start with 150 to go. I think you see that Isaac Barton started making a, a really strong move at about the 150. Strong but gradual. And now he's able to have the energy to finish the, with this last 100 pretty fast. Sean's holding his own. He's still holding on to that second position. The only person that is challenging him is Raul over in lane six in the red cap. And it looks like Raul's taken over the second position just by picking up his tempo there along the way in that last 100 to 150. These guys are on their last 50 of this 400 meter freestyle. This is heat two of three of the men's 400 meter freestyle. You're watching the City Paris Swimming World Series. This is the only American stop on the series. It happens annually, generally in April. And this year we're in Indianapolis. Isaac Barton is about to finish up his 500 free, 400 freestyle. He was 519 with an entry time, so he's going to be just under that at a 517.91. Had a 119 in his last 100. Raul Bermudez, just behind him, entered at a 522 and finished today in a 523.18. We'll see where that stacks up with the World Para Swimming Points system, and we'll find out a bit later who's going to be in our finals. But great swimming strategy by all of them. It, it, it paid and it cost. <laughs> Taking that first 100 out really fast. And I don't mean fast relative to the heat, but aggressively for the first entire 100 does have a little tax that comes due later in the race. So a classic style of swimming the 400 freestyle by um, Isaac there really paid off well. He was pretty conservative in that first 100, 150, but that set him up to be able to take over the, the race there in about the, the 200 to 250. And then it was, it was all his to hold on to. Just got one heat left. And 
Heat 3 is up next. I think we've got the graphic for Heat 2. I will, I will read you what I've got for Heat 3. Diego Rios from Mexico is in lane, will be swimming in lane number one. Aiden Williams in two. Owen McNair in three. Noah Jaffe is swimming in lane four. Carson Bruner in five. Matthew Torres in six. Max Kubik in lane seven and in lane eight from Mexico. Jesus Alberto Gutierrez Bermudez. This is heat three of three. This is the final heat of our 400 freestyles, our distance event. And then we're gonna move into the 50 freestyles. And we have lots of those. <laughs> I'm counting three or four pages. But that's the, as the amateurs call it, the splash and dash. But there's so much more that goes into the 50 freestyle than just hitting the gas pedal. We'll see how the strategy plays out for these guys. I think they just had a little start starting system error and they need these guys to step back I think the starter may have hit that button in error and they'll reset the system give them a whistle that we're going to start this time and here we go there might be something up with the button So hopefully that was a system error that they can they can remedy because you definitely want to have the athletes in position ready to go fast. Luckily it's a 400 freestyle so they have time to make any adjustments to whatever kind of start they had. And out in front early in lane four, that is Noah Jaffe from the US. He turns there at about 30, 31 seconds. Again, I'm not getting the splits for the 50s, but we are seeing them for the 100s. We'll see how he plays out. Noah is pretty seasoned in the 400 freestyle, as are most of the swimmers in this heat. So we'll probably see a pretty classic style of, you know, pressing yourself out to try to get an early lead and then um, staying in the race and holding your pace. <laughs> it's really a good way to put it when they get into this second 100. Right now, that's Noah Jaffe in lane four. He, f he uh, splits a 105. And then Owen McNair in three is 106. And 107. Actually, Matthew Torres was also 106. They were tied at the feet at the 100. So those two guys on either side of Noah hit the wall at the same time at the 100. Carson Bruner there is staying staying with that lead group just behind the guys battling for second. Noah Jaffe in lane four there. Looks like he's, he, his turns are gonna make a big difference for him. That, that last turn was nice and long and fast and he got out pretty far before he started swimming. And he did that without slowing down. So he obviously makes his turns very important to him or his coach kind of beats it into him at practice on a regular basis. When, when you bring great turns to the 400, it's because you train with great turns. That's Noah Jaffe getting ready to turn at the 200. And he's 108. He was 105 out. And he's 108 in the second 100. So he doesn't have much separation between those first two splits. He's 214 at the 200, swimming a very good race. And I see some, some coaches with arms up and um, cheering, so that's always a good sign that a swimmer's doing a great job. I don't know that anybody's gonna be able to, to challenge Noah in this heat. He's put enough separation. For the speed that these guys are swimming at in this heat, it would be very hard to break out and catch someone who's settled into about a 108 pace ahead of them. As I've talked about before, swimming out in front, you can see he keeps his arm, he, he's always got an arm out in front, so he's swimming a very balanced freestyle. All four of these leaders, or at least three of the four that are leading this heat, have always got an arm out in front of their shoulders. That helps your body balance across that long axis from your, 
from your head to your toes. That's the long axis we want them to rotate on. And Noah is all over it. He's uh, 324 at the 250, I'm sorry, at the 300. And you can see he hasn't necessarily, the result of making a move on himself is that he's made a move on the heat. He's, he's picked up his tempo. So in order to pick up your tempo when you get to this fatigue level in that last 100 of the 400, he's losing a little bit of that, of that out in front efficient freestyle. But the trade-off is you're swimming with a little bit more power, with a little bit higher tempo, and it keeps that split about the same, or you may even do what a swimmer did earlier in the women's race, where she negative split the second 200. And negative splitting is her fourth 100 was faster than her third 100. This is all Noah Jaffe coming into the last five meters of his 400 freestyle. He was he entered the race with a 429.9. He's 4.33. Um, I'm sure that he was going for a big swim this morning, and then maybe he'll come back tonight and try to bring something even better. Uh, great swim out of all four that have already finished. Second, there was Matthew Torres in lane six at 439.7. Third, Owen McNair. 440.7 and fourth was Carson Bruner with 445.23. So these guys are, are not at their best times, but you have to remember that happens a lot in the 400 freestyle in the preliminaries where you just try to set up your position to make the final and then you go much bigger in the evening in the final after a good rest. That's heat three of three of the men's 400 meter freestyle. We've got some highlights from one of the women's 400s there. We're coming up to the 50 freestyle, so now the officials will get the timing system set up and tested on the other side of the pool. There are seven heats of this. This is the S1 to 13, so this covers all of the classifications. In lane two from the U.S. will be Amanda Sheward. In lane three from the U.S., Eden Schroeder. In lane four from Canada, Hannah Olette. In lane five, also from Canada, Nikita Enz. In lane six, from Puerto Rico, Laura Mason Quinones. And in lane seven, from Canada, Miriam Solomon. So the swimmers are already out there ready to go. Hopefully our officials have the timing system and starting system good to go. They generally will test it when they're switching start sides of the pool. So that's what that horn was, just making sure the timing system is good to go. When they feel confident that it is, you'll hear a series of whistles. Now in the in the 50 free, unlike that last heat of the men's 400, we really need the, the starter and the starting system to be on because that start can determine the race outcome. <laughs> Right, this is heat one of seven of the women's 50 meter freestyle S1 to S13 multi-class event. You are watching the City Para Swimming World Series in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is the only stop in the U.S. of the of the series. They're on to Madeira, Portugal, a beautiful island off the coast of Portugal. And that's in, uh, I think, just a week or two. They're preparing in, in Madeira for that for that event. Athletes and their federations will be traveling there early to go through international classification and get themselves all set up to be selected for their 
Paralympic team to make it to the Paris 2024 Games. A couple of races across the pool. Looks like it's all lane seven. That is Miriam Solomon from Canada. Finishes first out of lane seven in a 40.84. She entered with a no time, so we don't know how to compare for her. Good camaraderie, good camaraderie I've been noticing amongst swimmers, not just congratulating and giving the thumbs up to swimmers from their own country, but the swimmers that they're competing with and the one that pushed them to get to a better time. One of the great benefits of sport is dropping the borders of our world and everybody's kind of in it together. We've got one swimmer left in the 50 freestyle in lane three that is Hannah oh I'm sorry that is Eden Schroeder from team not team USA but representing the US at this para swimming world series stop she's got about three meters left in this swim she entered at a 155.94 and she is Almost a second and a half faster than that at 154.40. So congratulations to Eden and all of our swimmers in Heat 1 of the Women's 50 Freestyle. We move on to Heat 2. See a good race there in lane 6 and 7. Really good. Right in there, just a, a tenth or two between them. Always ready to see that. And about 14 hundredths of a second separated the two of them in lane six and seven in heat one of seven. Up next is heat two of seven in lane one from the US is Lila Boykins. In lane two from Costa Rica, Ariana Coto. In lane three, Caitlin Trevor from the United States. In lane four, Nelly Miranda Herrera from Mexico. Also from Mexico, in lane five, Carla Bravo Gonzalez. In lane six from Mongolia, Namun Kurel. In lane seven from Mexico, Ibeth Solario Cuevas. And from the US in lane number eight, that is Gabby Schoperth. This is heat two of seven of the women's 50 meter freestyle. The women's and men's 50 freestyles are our last individual events to be contested, uh, last events to be contested in this morning preliminary session. We'll be back tonight at 5 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Heat 2 is off. Across lane 3, 5, and 8 is our early race. Uh, it's Caitlin Trevor in lane three. Looks like she's holding on to that early lead that she built. About 25 meters in. That black line across the lane lines there is the center point of this 50 meter pool. So that's 25 meters. 25 meters in, 25 meters to go. This is Caitlin Trevor of the U.S. Going to hit the wall first. She's got about five meters to go. And she hits the wall at a 40.58. Just behind her is lane number five, Gonzalez from Mexico in a 44.10. Third in that heat was Ariana Cotto from Costa Rica. And, oh, I was looking for Gabby, but she snuck in there in sixth, I thought. <laughs> I thought we still had another swimmer swimming. Nice job out of that heat. See, everybody gets away from the wall a little bit differently, some from in the water, some from up on the blocks. It was a, an early three-way tie across the pool, but then uh, Caitlin Trevor, you see how, how she feels about that race. <laughs> yeah, we all feel that way for you, Caitlin. Good swim, great swim. Looks like it must have been an outstanding time for her. 
is a little over a second faster than her entry time. Bringing us now to heat number three of seven, that's Julia Hickson that's gonna swim in lane one from the USA. Mia Clark also the, from the US in lane two. Alejandra Ibar Diaz in lane three from the Dominican Republic. From the US, Kiara Bauer in lane four. In lane five, that's Nesbeth, Nesbeth Vasquez Mieja from Mexico in lane six from the United States. Vivian Wandage. And lane number seven, Mallory Wegeman from the United States and also from the U.S., her teammate Riley Bosler in lane number eight. This is heat three of seven of the women's mixed 50 freestyle. See the different ways of start. Some Got some coaches helping with balance. Yeah, they're in lane two and three. And looks like five. Everybody else is going to get away from the block on their own. Good starts out of the whole heat. Lane seven, it looks like Mallory Wegeman's got an early lead that she likely will be able to hold on to. Challenging her from lane four is Kiara Bauer. But I think that uh, Mallory's not going to let anybody get close to her. She has an incredible international history in this event that involves medals <laughs> at various Paralympic Games. So she is proving what she came here to do. That's Mallory Wegeman at 33.75 in first place out of lane seven. Um, entered at a very conservative 39. So um, happy with that swim, I'm sure. Second in that heat was up in the middle of the pool, Kiara Bauer, who was trying to challenge Mallory, but Mallory pulled away in that last 15 meters. Kiara was 36.25, and then 37.18, third place, Vivian Wandich from the United States in lane number six. See, they all got away from the block very well. There was a pretty close tie there with Mallory and Kiara, but Mallory used her experience in the second half of the 50 and made it very clear why she came here today. Congratulations to all these, all these athletes that are here to qualify, here to check their training, here to get classified. There's all, si all kinds of different reasons to be at this meet, but the best reason is to race. And that was a good one. Heat four of seven coming up from Mexico. Naomi Ortiz Mendez from Mexico. Also in lane two, Diana Jimenez Martinez from Chile. Valentina Munoz Moreno from Canada in lane four. Sambul Zafar in lane five from the United States. Savannah Zerbel. Michaela Epig Epestigu from Peru. I apologize if I'm not doing well with your last name, Michaela. From the U.S. in lane seven, that's Maggie Scherter and Giselle Prada Pachon from Colombia in lane number eight. Probably best starts out of lane three. Lane three and lane four. Having a good battle here. Can't count out Savannah Zerbel in lane five, or I'm in, in lane six there. That is Michaela Apestigui. Here from Peru to do business in the 50 freestyle, and business she does in a 33.88. That is three seconds, nearly three seconds faster than her best time, and you can see the, the fist pump after her finish. Outstanding, and the big smile tells the story. She came here to do that, and she did it. That's just outstanding. I'm going to go with Apestigui until somebody tells me otherwise. But always great to see the big ear-to-ear -ear smile after a swimmer's great, great result. Pretty sure she came here to go that fast, and she did it.
Because he doesn't get away from the block really fast. But she is in the race early and just turns on that, that straight arm recovery freestyle into a fantastic 33 for her. And look at that reaction. <laughs> big fist bumps right into the big ear-to-ear -ear smile. She's just realizing her time. She sees her time. And yes, nothing like that. Big sigh of relief and a lot of lead off the shoulders of, am I going to go as fast as I wanted to? And she did. Heat five, Heat five that's Nicole Trevor Brelowski from Mexico in lane one, Rachel Keen in two, from Japan, Kenan Fukuda in lane three, Gia Pergolini in four, Colleen Young in five, Momo Sutton in six, Mackenzie Cohen just got out, of, a lot of these women just got out of the 400 freestyle. That's Mackenzie in lane seven and lane eight, Megan Gia Freda. Gia Pergolini in four is getting this swim done. Colleen Young is challenging her in five, but I don't think Gia's gonna let anybody close. Gia had a very good 400 freestyle less than an hour ago. She gets into the wall first at 28.23, um, just a little bit off of her entry time of 27.8. Um, gotta be happy with that though. Second in that heat was Colleen Young, 29.79. And third was Kanan Fukuda from Japan in a 32.30. So good swim. Gia always swims very aggressively, and it paid off in that swim against the heat. Now you see the start list for heat six of seven heats. Matilda Alcazar Figueroa from Mexico in lane one. Allie Deal from Canada in lane two. Mary Jib from Canada in lane three. Ayano Chichuchi from Japan in lane number four. From the US, that's gonna be Audrey Kim in five. Chloe Cedarholm in lane six. Shelby Newkirk from Canada in lane seven and Paola Ruvacava Nunez in lane eight for Mexico. This will be the sixth heat of seven of the women's mixed classifications, 50 meter freestyle. We've seen some great racing today. A couple of breakouts from some of our younger swimmers and some solid, solid pre-selection swims out of our veterans. Get the long whistle that steps them up to the starting position. Some of them will stand and get their air. Some of them will come down into the starting position before they say take your mark. Everybody was very still and pretty quick off the blocks there for that, for this heat. Early and clear lead, Ayano from Japan in lane number four. She's been swimming very well against the competition at this meet. Audrey Kim is challenging her in lane five and may actually be very close to tie. No, Ayano pulled it off there with about 10 meters left, picked up her tempo and is gonna take a solid win at 28.42. 29.24 for Audrey Kim in second and in third place in that heat was Mary Jib from Canada in a 30.72. That was heat six. You see them get away from the wall here. Ayano is a little better underwater and established herself just about a body length ahead of Audrey there. Kept her tempo and speed velocity right up to the finish. Both of them had a great race. And we move on to our final heat of the women's 50 meter freestyle. Again, another who's who in Paralympic swimming. In lane one, that's Ellie Marks, just gotten out of the 400 herself from the US. In lane two, from Mexico, Sarah Vargas Blanco. Maria Franciscati in lane number three. From the United States, Olivia Chambers, 21 years and one day old today. In lane four. In lane five, that's Grace Neufer. 
in lane six from Mexico, Maria Tellez Gomez. Britt Conrad from the United States is in lane seven and from Mexico in lane number eight, Emilia Gonzalez Chanes. This is our final heat, heat seven. Good starts for all. But Olivia Chambers is seemingly unstoppable at this swim meet. She's swimming so hungry. I'm not sure I'm going to have to talk to her coach, Ben, to see if she is rested for this meet. If not, maybe this is just birthday energy. But with five meters to go, this is all Olivia Chambers hitting the wall at 28-29. A uh, little off her best time that she's entered with. But then in second, Grace Neufer at 28.88. And in third, Maria Francescotti at 31.34. Up in lane one, Ellie Marks finished with a 34.09. Sarah Blanco from Columbia, 33.89, was fifth in that heat. Maria Gomez from Mexico was seventh. See how fast they get away from the blocks here. And the, the differentiator, if I'm coining a word, was when they hit the water, who got into the fastest dolphin kick first? And that's what separated them in that race. Great swim for Olivia Chambers. I guess I've been saying that a lot this meet. That concludes the women's 50 meter freestyle mixed classification. We now have seven heats of the men, just as we had seven heats of the women. And in heat one, Isaiah Sono from Peru. Next three swimmers from Mexico. In lane two, Omar Osario Salazar. Jonathan Hernandez Gonzalez in three. Christopher Tronco Sanchez from Mexico in lane number four. Also from Peru in lane number five, Manuel Silva Diaz. Carlo Ibarra Juarez from Mexico in lane six and from Canada in lane seven. Riley Martin. This is heat one of seven of the men's mixed class 50 meter freestyle. You're watching the City Para Swimming World Series in Indianapolis. As they say, I don't know if it's their present catch line, but all racers come to Indy and they certainly have this weekend. It's a little gloomy outside, but that's what you expect in a, in a mid to early springtime morning. A little chilly, a little rainy, but that's how we get the great flowers and the great crops here in the Midwest. We get those spring rains. And as I can relate just about anything to swimming, it's kind of like the hard work we do before we get the benefit of the rest. Got to have the spring if you're going to have the summer. Quick and early lead there in lane three. That is Jonathan Gonzalez. He's been having a fantastic swim meet. I've been saying his name a lot as heat winners throughout this meet. And the 50 freestyle is no exception. Jonathan's out there in front. In lane six, he's being challenged a bit, but I am think maybe not by enough with Carlo Ibarra Juarez from Mexico. But I think this is gonna be Jonathan Gonzalez. Yep, finishing first, that's Gonzalez from Mexico, 37.73. Uh, he entered with a no time, so I'm not sure where that stacks up. Second to him was Carl Juarez from Mexico in a 38.08. Finishing third there in lane one is in 53.54 from Peru. That's Isaias Sono. Now we've got a pretty, pretty close race here for fourth, fifth, sixth. And they all finish certainly within a second there in the 106, 107 range. So those guys get their whistle to clear out the heat and they head to the side of the pool. Jonathan really shot away from the heat there in, in, in that previous heat. Moving on to Jonathan's time there, 37.73 in lane three.
sometimes a, a time won't come up that is usually worked out in the administrative desk. The primary timing system is a touch pad that hangs on the wall. The secondary, we see just how well Jonathan got away from the start there. I don't think there was going to be much of a chance of anybody catching him, even though he was challenged. I believe by Carlo. Nice swim. Oh, maybe he doesn't like the time, but I like the place. So he won that heat. And uh, when he realized what his time was, you saw that reaction. Actually, that's as good a reaction as the fist pump when it's great. Because it, one thing swimmers are is self-critical and very honest about their performance. So most swimmers are not going to be able to pull off fake and how they feel. Their face tells the story. So he had a great start, outstanding swim, but not quite the time he was looking for out of heat one. Heat two, Marco Cerati Rodriguez from Mexico is swimming in lane one. From Spain, Miguel Luque. From the United States, Noah Thomas, that is in lane three. In lane four from Brazil, Alan Kleber Basilio. In lane five from Colombia, Miguel Rincon Nivares. In lane six from the US, John Trowick. That is Diego Lopez Diaz from Mexico in lane seven. And from Chile, Patricio Larenas Albaye. This is heat two of seven, the men's 50 meter freestyle. And see again, if you're just tuning in for the first time on this meet, there's all kinds of ways to start. You see the swimmer on the bottom is holding onto a strap. He just has to have his feet on the wall. On the top of your screen there, coaches are holding feet to walls. All the way to a swimmer that was completely on their own on the block and really blasted away there in lane three. That's Noah Thomas from the United States. I think he is, uh, he has come to Indy to race. <laughs> He's well out in front of this heat. Entered with a 39-14. We'll see where that stacks up. Swimmers are approaching 30 seconds right about now. And he is definitely closer than nine seconds away from the wall. That's Noah Thomas, 35-37. Let's see if, if he's pleased with that time. Looks like he's just taking it in stride. He saw his time. Just a little, little head shake, yes. Like, yep, I did that. As the rest of the heat finishes up. They're in lane one from Mexico, Rodriguez, 53-20. About three seconds off of his entry time. And Albaye from Chile finishes a little over a minute. I'm not sure that was accurate. And his time did not come up officially. See, everybody got away from the wall differently. Such a great thing about Paralympic swimming, even the playing field with the classification system. The finish order was different than the start order. So it all really has to happen in the pool. Great job out of that heat two. Heat three of seven of our last event of the morning. Carlos Roca Hernandez in lane one from Mexico. In lane two from Canada, Leo Zhang. In lane three, Jan Babayuski from the United States in lane three. In lane four, Morgan Ray from the US. Abbas Karimi next to him from the United States in lane five. In lane six, that's Max Kubik. In lane seven, Marcus Vital. And also from the United States, Alex Cooper in lane eight. This is heat three of seven of the men's 50 meter freestyle. out of an error I made last year in calling Morgan a different name than his name by mistake. I've uh, started to develop a good, fun working relationship with Morgan. I get to see him, he trains very often and for long periods of time up at the US Olympic and Paralympic Training Center in Colorado Springs with the resident training team. So I get to see Morgan train just about every morning alongside our paratriathlon team that I am coaching. Um, certainly not coaching the running or the biking, but uh, I am helping out with the swimming, trying to get our triathletes a little more efficient 
through the water. And then they've got that energy for the bike and the run. Out of the six or seven athletes that we have, we've already qualified quite a few for the Paris Games. There is Morgan Ray right there in lane number six. The story behind that was I was calling him Evan for an entire day of a broadcast, and I did not know that his parents' phones were blowing up, his phone was blowing up. Who is this dummy on the microphone not calling you Morgan? I am the dummy. <laughs> so he's having a good swim here. Abbas Karimi has made some, some training adjustments and is really becoming competitive at a world-class level. He was already at a world-class level, but he's notched it up there. That's a boss in lane number five. Lane number four, though, I'm sorry, got that backwards. That, that is a boss in five. Max Kubik is your winner of that heat, 33-54. 35-61 for a boss just behind him. And in lane three, that is Morgan Ray from the United States with a 36-18. Outstanding efforts and from those efforts, pretty outstanding, excuse me, outstanding results in that third heat of the men's 50 meter freestyle. I get sad when we've only got a few heats left. And I'll rest up the voice and we'll get some good calls for tonight's races. We, we'll finish tonight with some relays. See how these guys Morgan really has a great start getting away from the blocks fast. Abbas Karimi goes from a dolphin kick on his underwater off the start to this very, very fast, good body position, finishes with the top of his head there. But your winner in that heat, Max Kubik. Outstanding swim for Max. Heat four of seven is behind the blocks, waiting for the whistle. That is Rodrigo Wu from Peru. From the US, Isaac Barton in lane two. From the US, also Sean Grady in lane three. In lane four, Lander Eichelzer. In lane five from Canada, Charlie Gia Michelle. In lane six from Costa Rica, Nathan Alfaro. In lane seven from the United States, Tyler Austin. And from Mexico, Raul Martinez Valdez in lane number eight. This is heat four of seven heats of this event. The men's mixed 50 freestyle. This is all of the classifications are in this, in this particular event, S1 to S13. Good race all the way across. It, it, it looks closer than it is. It's going to be three, four, five, six as they finish. That's Sean Grady winning that heat, 31.04. 31.42 for, for Lander. And our Canadian swimmer, Charlie Gia Michelle, was third in 31.80. Fourth there from Costa Rica, Nathan Alfaro. Great race. The, the angle of our cameras there made it look a little closer, but uh, they were coming in at an angle as a group. So it wasn't me being really good at watching. They were definitely coming in a bit diagonal. You see that one, two, three, four finish. All within about a second and a half. See that order is different. It's not one, two, three, four there, but they parse it out. Starting with lane three, see they're a little scattered, but they're all within a second and a half for the top four places. Great swim. When you hit the wall and the momentum takes you to your back, you know you had a great finish in the 50 freestyle. That was heat four. This is heat five coming up. Irvin, Irving Luna Contreras from Mexico in lane number one. In lane two from Canada, Antonio Fricano. Octavio Romero Velasquez from Canada, I'm sorry, from Mexico in lane three. Jamal Hill in lane four. 
I think this might be Jamal's first individual event. He was a bronze medalist in Tokyo in this event. Jaden Trithard Godfrey from Mexico in lane five. Also from Mexico, Nestor Ramirez in lane six. In lane seven, that is Trevor Bell from the U.S. and from Mexico, Diego Vasquez in lane eight. You can see that, that fast tempo, high shoulder, straight arm freestyle recovery. That gets you to the center of the pool pretty well. You have to bring in a little more of a kick after that, which you can see Jamal is doing. He keeps his tempo fast all the way to the finish at a 25.91, which is a little bit faster, about two tenths faster than his entry time of 26.17. Outstanding efforts all the way across the pool, but that was a good show from, from Jamal in that race. Showing a, a, a sprinter's style, but not just a sprinter's style, but he's very long, very tall, and very strong. So he can be very successful with that straight arm recovery freestyle. And like I talked about in one of the women's distance events, they're very similar strokes. It's a little bit higher shoulder, a little bit deeper hips than that very, very efficient freestyle, but efficiency sometimes has to be thrown out for speed's sake. You see his shoulders and his lats are up nice and high, and that frees up the ability to have a tempo that fast. Jamal's been spending the last couple of years really working on this technique, and it is paying off. He goes 25-9 this morning. We'll see what he can put out there this afternoon. I'll try to go bug him and see what he's going after tonight during the break. That was heat five, heat six of seven. Lane one from Colombia, Nelson Crispin Corzo. From Mexico in lane two, Miguel Lopez Coronado. Noah Bush in three, Yassine El Demerdash in four, both from the United States. Daniel Geraldo Correa from Colombia in lane number five. Walker Keithley in six. Ryan Edelman in seven. And from Mexico, Diego Gonzalez Andrade in lane eight. This is heat six of seven. Good dolphin kick there out of Yassine El Demerdash. Would have loved to watch it. We might be able to see a matchup between he and Jamal tonight in the 50. When those guys race against each other, they both get better. So we definitely want to see that. Looks like Yassine's got this heat well in hand. Just behind him is Daniel Correa from Colombia. And Yassine is 2572, so he's two, cent, two tenths faster than Jamal. And uh, that'll probably make him happy, but motivate, motivate Jamal for tonight. Hopefully we get those guys in that A final. Second in there was from Columbia, Daniel Correa. And third in that heat from the United States, Noah Bush at 2775. Great swims all along. Our next race is our last race of the morning. You are watching the City Paris Swimming World Series presented here by U.S. Paris Swimming and Toyota. We want to graciously thank our sponsors that support these athletes chasing their dreams and achieving them. As a coach, that's kind of a sponsorship. I did that for about 35 years, trying to lift up athletes to their goals. And uh, that is still going on strong here in this pool. I'm going to say from a facial reaction, he's happy with the heat win. Maybe not completely pleased with the time. Uh, and we'll see what this last heat puts up against Yassine and Jamal for the final tonight. This is heat seven. Jack O'Neill is in lane one. Emmett Martin in two. Trevor Lukasko in three. They are all from the United States. From Norway, Frederick Solberg in four. David Abrams in five. Diego Rios in six. Owen McNear and Jesus Manuel from Mexico in lane number eight. You wonder why lane four keeps winning these heats. Well, that is the fastest seated lane. This is Frederick Solberg from Norway trying to keep those guys behind him. Outstanding effort, and it looks like he's going to do just that at a 
So he is going to go in with the fastest time. We'll see where those guys' times stack up against the world record and where they get their points. Since there are three heats of the final, an A final, a B final, and an 18 and under final, I'm sure those top three swimmers this morning will be invited to that final. And this is time to wrap up this morning. I want to thank you for watching. If you came in and went and came back, or if you stuck through the whole, se the whole session, we really appreciate it. This is the City Para Swimming World Series, the USA stop in Indianapolis at the IU Natatorium. And we thank you for joining us. We're going to be back on the air at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And we look forward to seeing you here.